These are designed for fishing boats and ships so that something happens to go in the water, they automatically are triggered by the salt water, they send a signal off, we know there's a distress somewhere. We get a position from the satellites and we go to hell. So that's just something that I'm not willing to put on my life jacket. Today you have these little things that are just as good. This is the same thing. This is, well, same technology, different device, personal locator beacon. And fits in your life jacket because you want this thing on your life jacket, on your person, because if something really goes wrong, you want to be able to put your hands on this. So when I push this button, when my life is in danger, it listens to the GPS satellites. It <laughs> says, after about a minute, I'm in this position, latitude and longitude, sends a message that goes up to a system of satellites that's in space. We've got ears up there, low Earth orbit, and we got geostationary. The geostationary satellite stays in one spot, and as soon as you push that button on the beacon, and it fires up the message, it hears it. So, very quick to notify us. If it is a orbital satellite, they're at around six or 800 kilometers in space, and they go over the pole. It takes about 84 to 90 minutes to do that transit, and uh, that'll take longer to pick you up because there's a less of a chance that that'll hear you. Small, see there's a little small, what we call footprint for those low Earth orbiting, but see how big the geostationary is? You can hear right from one pole to the other practically. And lo and behold, a few minutes later, it arrives on my desk, and I know somebody has activated a distress signal, and if it's registered, it has a unique fingerprint, an ID, it's called a hex code. You register that when you buy it, very important, because if you don't, we don't know who it is, don't know who to call, we'll still come to it, but it's a lot easier for us to know who registered it, what equipment they're using, maybe they have a cell phone, home phone, we can verify, and if it's a false alarm, we can put that to rest within 10 minutes. We like that. We like that. And when it's a real thing, we call the home number, the contact, the emergency contact, they say, yeah, Joe's out on a kayak expedition, or he, he's, he's paddling the sable autumn to the new park. And there's the beacons going off right in the middle, you know, between Halifax and Sable. We go out and save them. Um, yeah, so that, that's that one. And then, then there are other devices. There's a spot device. That's another satellite um, emergency type beacon. And the world is broken up into uh, real estate, search and rescue real estate. Everybody owns a piece of the world when it comes to search and rescue. Everybody knows which piece of it is theirs. Some countries don't have the kind of infrastructure that we have, so that that signal you're going to get the, you're going to get notification. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I registered in the zone. If, if it's in my remember, I showed you that slide at the top that showed yeah. you my piece of the pot. So if it goes off in there, we get it. Okay. I if know, it, but if that device is not in your zone, you're still getting the signal. No. If this no. If this device goes off in the U.S., it'll go to the U.S. Rescue Coordination Center, and they will treat it like we do. And they will be calling the Canadian Beacon Registry because it'll be a Canadian Registry Beacon That's for right. the information and the contact information okay. that the registered on you. Yeah. So it doesn't go where it's registered, it's going to go off in this area that you're at. Yeah, that's right. We won't charge you anything right now, but there's another device. Oh, this one, only good to 75 degrees north and south. So if you're planning on going to the poles or Antarctica, on an expedition, this is not what you want. Right? And there's another device, it's called a Delorme in Reach. It's kind of a text and same kind of idea as spot. You can text and send messages and alerts and all that kind of stuff. It's personal choice which one which one you want to use. But I really like this one. Anything with 406 <coughs> megahertz. Distress beacons that that will come to the rescue coordination center. And one one thing I'll say about beacon registry.
contact the Beacon Register every 12 months. If nothing has changed, and you just still got to update your information. A lot of people register once, and then they don't. They think it's good forever. But if anything has changed with your Beacon, they need to know. So, so that that's a that's an insurance policy that's always in your pocket, and it's only when your life is on the line. But now we're getting down to something here now. The VHF radio and. The reason that the BHF radio is important for you and a waterproof one is that you can contact other vessels. This is what's really important. When, when you set that thing off, other vessels won't hear you. We'll know, we'll put a message out through Coast Guard radio to alert everybody. So everybody on the water that has a VHF radio on the distress frequency will hear that there's a problem lacking long they'll come to help. This will do the same thing, only you can only reach a radio station that's within visual range, VHF range of the radio, but so many fishing boats and pleasure boats around the coast, very good chance that if you get on this and say I'm in position such and such and I need help, some fishing boat will come right away. Some Coast Guard auxiliary like our good friend Conrad sitting over in the corner there. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, so the VHF radio, and so, so you can get a radio that has a digital select call feature, um, which what that is, is a, it's, a, it's a code. When you buy the radio, it has a special nine digit code. And when you call in and register with Industry Canada, put the same kind of stuff in it, and they have GPS in them, so if you send out a distress on there, you get a unique ID, you get a Latin long, and the coast radio station gets, to, gets all that, relays it to us. Okay, Coast Guard radio stations are situated all along the coast of our great Atlantic provinces, and they will most likely pick up your signal, relay it to us, and then we do our thing. <coughs> okay, next slide. Okay, cell phone can work for you. I wouldn't count on this to be my primary means of alerting. Uh, dependent, uh, there, there's, there's a bunch of ways to get us. Star 16 will be routed to the co closest Coast Guard radio station. Uh, our 1-800 number will bring you right to my desk and I'll start working right away, there's no delay. 911, a call to 911 will eventually get it to me as well. Problem with the cell phone, most of you have the smartphone and the touch phone. You're out paddling, the weather's cold, you got your big old heavy gloves on. You're in trouble, you gotta use your cell phone. 